the ambassador of the state of Palestine to the United Kingdom. He joins me now live from London. Ambassador, great to have you here with us on TRT World. Six months have passed uh, since uh, Israel launched its onslaught on Gaza. If there is one word that could describe the catastrophe that has unfolded in the besieged enclave, what would it be? It would be travesty. This is a travesty on the 21st century. Who would have imagined that six months on and Israel's genocide of our people in Gaza continues, that the world fails to stop this uh, unprecedented mass murder of children, of women, mass destruction of hospitals, schools, universities, civil structures? Who would have Im imagined six months of an imposed famine on 2.3 million people and still ongoing? Who would have imagined that 1.9 million people displaced and still displaced all the way in Rafah, homeless, uh, taking shelters in, in open spaces? Who would have imagined that the world will stand silent and some of them complicit in the atrocities, the murderous, genocidal atrocities uh, uh, of Israel? It's a dark, dark moment. Uh, and I believe this moment is going to have severe consequences, not only uh, on us, the Palestinian people, but for the rest of the world. It will have consequences on our humanity, on our values, on our international legal system, the world uh, order, the UN and the rules we created after the horrors of the Second World War. And it will have consequences on the next wars because everybody is watching what Israel has done. Israel has demolished Every rule we built together, every basic value and principle the human family has built together. And now who's next? Whose children is going to be next? Whose hospitals are going to be next? Whose journalists, whose doctors are going to be next? Whose population and people are going to be annihilated? Annihilated. Is what Israel is doing in real time, documented by the very people that they are being genocided, is an erasure. It's an erasure of a, an entire population. And we thought in the first few days that one Palestinian child will shock the world. Maybe 100, maybe 1,000 child, maybe 10,000 children, Palestinian children will shock the world. And now, look what is happening. Perhaps the world is waiting for 100,000 children, Palestinian children to be murdered, slaughtered at the hands of their ally. That is Israel. It is a bleak, bleak moment. Ambassador, with all due respect, uh, I think you're wrong there, and I'll tell you why. Because more than 10,000 children have been killed in Gaza by Israel, but that did not wake up the international community. What uh, yeah, caused what the saying. international that's community to exactly. wake up was the killing of seven foreign aid workers. And that is primarily why I guess we are seeing a lot of efforts to somehow uh, foster uh, peace uh, in the region. What is your navigation through this? That's exactly what I was trying to say. If 10,000 Palestinian children, and there are more now, more than 13,000 murdered by Israel, and 17,000 Palestinian children who are orphaned did not shock the world, but seven international aid workers did. And by the way, we have our, they have our full sympathy, Absolutely. these aid workers who have been, who have been slaughtered by, by Israel. Uh, it tells you all you need to know. It tells you how the world, particularly the West, looks at us. As Palestinians, as 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 Middle Easterns, as 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 Muslims, as Christians, even they look at us as our lives do not really matter the same. They look at us from a from a prism of numbers. We are just numbers, and we don't understand anymore what is the number they are going to tolerate. So yes, indeed, it's a it's a moment that dents our humanity, that really a, a question mark all that we have been up to and 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 for for all these years. The values we created, the system we created, the rules we created were not Western values. They were universal values. All of us came together to say never again. And look how Israel is corrupting the world. Israel is literally corrupting our souls. It's corrupting America, corrupting England and the UK, corrupting Europe, corrupting Asia, corrupting Africa. It is dragging all of us into this immoral abyss. Uh, it, is, it is truly, truly going to uh, uh, have severe consequences on generations to come. Because, you know, after the horrors of the Second World War, our parents and grandparents did leave us uh, structures and rules uh, uh, to make sure that wars do not erupt. And when they do erupt, there are wars. There are rules for these wars. And if these rules are 
are violated, there are consequences, which is the international judicial system, the ICC, the ICJ. And look, what are we going to leave to our children after what Israel has done in the last six months? What are we leaving to our children? And what is the conversation now? Everybody is discussing uh, uh, micro issues, and nobody is discussing the root cause of all this, which is Israel's occupation, colonization, besiegement, the rule of apartheid that they have imposed on the right. Palestinian people for decades. And, and therefore, yes, uh, it is the wall that we need to discuss right now, my friend, not Israel. Israel is genocidal. It's as simple as that. And they believe they can get away with anything. They can get away with the murder of children, the murder of doctors, the murder of journalists, the murder of international aid workers, the murder of anybody. They could get away with destroying our education sector, our health sector, our water uh, uh, treatment plants, our everything. Uh, this is about the rest of us, not about Israel. What are we going to do? And so far, the world has failed miserably to enforce the so-called international norms and rules. And Dean, I think it's a matter of shame for humanity seeing what has unfolded in Gaza over the past uh, six uh, months. Now, Ambassador, I've spoken to many experts about this subject, and I want to bring your attention to this. You know, when I ask experts living in the U.S. and Western countries, who is that one person, who is that one country that could possibly bring an end to Israel's onslaught on Gaza? And they always tell me it is the United States. But it seems to me now even the U.S. is helpless when it comes to stopping Netanyahu from attacking Gaza because uh, okay. attacks I'm, continue. I'm I'm, I'll have to disagree with you here. It is the U.S. because the U.S. Uh, is the country that uh, allows, enables Israel to do all that. Uh, it provides Israel with all the weapons that Israel end up using against our, our people. Israel will not be able to destroy all this, kill all this, without the U.S. arms uh, being made available, as you may have followed only last week, a deal of $18 billion uh, been approved uh, arms uh, to Israel by the U.S. Uh, the U.S. shields Israel in every political and legal arena. They shield them from accountability at the ICC, at the ICJ. And you know how many times the U.S. exercised their veto power to block the international community and the Security Council from reaching a, a resolution on an immediate and permanent cease, uh, ceasefire. And even when uh, the U.S. abstained in the last resolution, they came uh, a few uh, minutes later are saying this is non-binding, if you remember. So it is the U.S. And remember, only the last few days, when the U.S. president uh, called the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and asked him to allow for humanitarian aid, Netanyahu uh, uh, made a bit of distraction and maneuvering, and he allowed some aid. So the U.S. does matter. And if the U.S. does not exercise its leverage on Israel, then the U.S. is practically complicit in the crimes being committed against the Palestinian people. Okay, it's, it's mind-boggling because uh, I want to I want to get this right. So are you indicating that uh, the U.S. does not have genuine intentions when it comes to stopping the war? Because on the one hand, we see statements uh, like permanent ceasefire, ceasefire now uh, from the White House, especially over the past uh, few weeks, uh, that Israel should uh, protect civilian lives. But on the other, as you said, the U.S. has been arming Israel, and it's the American bombs that uh, Israel has been using in Gaza. So action speaks uh, louder than words. Is that what it is? Exactly. It is not words that we are interested in. We have had enough statements from several U.S. officials. What we need is action. And the U.S. has a toolbox. They know what to do. They have done it many times with other uh, uh, international players and even friends. They know what to do. They know, they know the S word, sanctions. And they know uh, the Israeli officials and politicians like Netanyahu will never listen to words and statements. They will only listen when they start receiving real consequences. And the first act is an arms embargo. embargo. And this is a U.S. responsibility because now the International Court of Justice says that the crime of genocide, which is the crime of all crimes, uh, is plausible. The crime that is brought against Israel by South Africa is plausible, and therefore the court, which is the highest court of, of the planet, has officially put Israel under trial for genocide. And at this point, the U.S. should have immediately stopped uh, exportation of arms uh, to a country that is committing uh, genocide. And that's not a demand, by the way. This is a commitment by countries like the U.S. who are contracting parties of the international uh, uh, system. And therefore, yes, we need action. How about suspending Israeli uh, uh, membership in the UN? Because Israel has already violated the ruling of the ICJ 
and the UN Security Council resolution, uh, uh, the recent one calling for an immediate ceasefire. How about banning all the illegal settlement products from arriving to the US and the rest of Europe? How about banning all the settlers? How about banning all the companies, the US companies and European companies who illegally profit from illegal colonial settlements in the occupied uh, territories? And I can go on on the list of steps and actions that the US and the UK and the rest of the world could take to enforce their will uh, on Israel. Because, you know, sweet talk and sympathies and, oh, we are very sad about what is happening. Uh, our conscious is, uh, uh, you know, they make us feel as if we are making them feel bad. I mean, do something, do something. You are a state and a contracting party of the international system. It is your responsibility to stop genocide. It is your responsibility to treat every single state in the international system equally. And it is the US, it is the US that has enabled Israel to behave as if they are a pariah state, above the rules, above the law, an exception to every rule. And that's what Israel is, is, is getting. That's what Israel is, is is interpreting that they can do anything. It is the West that enabled all this from day one, when every uh, uh, Western politician on the 7th of October and onward said just one sentence, that Israel has the right to defend itself unequivocally without ensuring that that is within the contours of international law, without reminding Israel as an occupying power that occupation and occupying powers do not have rights. They have responsibilities, obligations, duties. The main duty of any occupying power is to protect the civilian population under their occupation and to provide for them, provide health, education, food, water, not to impose famine, a man-made, an Israeli-made famine on the Palestinian people. And that's why, from day one, uh, Western politicians have miserably failed to apply the same rules uh, uh, equally. And look at the results. Look at the results. And until now, they are unable to take uh, the actions required by these states to actually stop uh, uh, the, 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 the genocide. So until I see a, a decision by the US administration to stop sending Israel arms, then we can discuss if the US is serious or not. A strong words there. Now, Ambassador, I know you are a bit tight on time, but I really have to ask you this one question because it's related to the latest developments uh, that have taken place. Now, a meeting is going to take place in Cairo involving all key stakeholders. Certainly, this is not the first time these stakeholders are meeting, but is there something different this time around? And how confident are you that something concrete can, can come out of this meeting? There has been an international formula uh, ne negotiated, mediated by main countries, regional and international, uh, Qatar included, Egypt included, the US included. And this formula includes the exchange of hostages. I want to remind the world through you, my friend, that we have hostages in Israeli jails. Israel has been taking thousands of Palestinian hostages before the 7th of October and after the 7th of October. I mean, they rounded 4,000 of our people in the West Bank since the 7th of October, in the last six uh, uh, months. Most of these people, if not all of them, without trial, without charge, and the conditions is horrific. Only this morning there was a report by Israeli press that there is a, a, a pattern of imputations among Palestinian detainees inside the Israeli uh, uh, detention camps because of the coughing. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the condition is horrific to an extent that Israeli doctors now are cutting the legs and cutting the hands uh, of these detainees. Those are hostages. We have children in Israeli detention, Palestinian children. We have women and girls in Israeli detention. And only recently, the UN came out with a damning report of sexual violence and rape being uh, done against our women in Israeli detentions. So this is a file that needs to be looked at. Our hostages have equal rights like all other hostages. And therefore, the formula is there. We are calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. We are calling for Israeli forces to immediately withdraw from all territories in the Gaza Strip and never to allow Israel for its real aim, which is the mass expulsion of the Palestinian people out of the Gaza uh, Strip. And that's why they have been displacing 1.9 million people all the way to Rafah. That's why they keep threatening, and I believe they, will, they, they want to do it, to invade Rafah. Uh, 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 because this is the plan. The plan is to turn Gaza lifeless, 
uh, unlivable to destroy the north, destroy the middle of Gaza, make sure that people in the very south in Rafah has no homes to go back to. They have no schools to send their schools uh, children to. They have famine if they come back to the north of Gaza. And then in the south, they continue bombarding them because the plan is to push them out of the uh, homeland. In such a scenario, in such a, a, a picture, uh, any deal has got to make sure that Israeli plans are challenged and not implemented, that a ceasefire is uh, uh, permanent and is immediate, that we move directly to a political horizon that visit the root cause of all this once and for all. 76 years of Nakba and displacement and disposition, 56 years of occupation and colonization, 17 years of besiegement of Gaza and blockade, this is a time when we turn this tragedy into a momentum and we move in a very quick process uh, uh, and steps that are irreversible and credible towards ending this occupation once and for all, towards liberation and, to, and towards giving the Palestinian people their rights of self-determination and return. Fascinating insights into the topic. Ambassador Hossam Zomlot, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time. Thank you.